So this is the um, Don't Get Tick New York presentation that I've put together. Um, the idea is to prevent tick bites and the prospect for disease for everybody in the community and not just ours. This is a nationwide problem. It, the difference is that we have ticks that other parts of the country don't have and vice versa. The, one of the issues is that as the weather warms up, we, um, they're more likely to come into or out of an area. So even though the Lone Star tick probably originated in the South and of course in Texas, it's now being found in New York and as far as Maine. So um, because there are more ticks and in more places, there's more of an impact of the diseases and there's never been a greater need for protection and prevention. Let me see if I can get you guys out of here. Whoop, okay. You, oh, get, get out of there. Ah, okay. Tick facts. Ticks don't fly, jump, or blow around in the wind. And that's a common misconception. They're small, patient, and quite amazing in their ability to locate their host or their prey. Their sole purpose is to make more ticks, propagate their species, and they don't mean to, but they unknowingly pass diseases to the hosts they feed on, whether that be a deer or a person. They don't feed often, but when they do, they acquire the disease from one host, usually an animal, and frequently like the uh, white-footed mouse, and they pass it to another animal, frequently the deer, and um, then humans at a later feeding. Okay, the chance of catching Lyme disease from an individual tick goes anywhere from zero to 50%, depending on the type of tick it is, and most of the ticks we have in our area are black-legged ticks, and that's the same as a deer tick. The names are used interchangeably. The length of time that the tick was feeding, um, 24 hours at least for, um, for um, a disease to be transferred. Some can be as long as a few days. And whether or not the tick was carrying the bacteria because they're not all infected with Lyme. These are deer ticks. The smallest one right uh, here, can you see that? Whoop. Mm -hmm. And okay, that's a larva. Okay, when the egg hatch, that's what you get. It molts into the nymph, which is right here, and the nymph can actually carry disease. Then you have the feet or the male deer tick, and you have the female deer tick. You see, once they reach this stage, they have eight legs. They aren't. Um, they're in the spider family but not in the class. The class is uh, the same as mites. Again, here I want, I feel really strongly, you need to understand how small these are. This is the nymph. Can you see my arrow? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, the nymph is about the same size as the D on a dime. And when you pull out a dime and look at it, that's really small. So if you're looking for that on your body somewhere, you have to really look close. The Lone Star Tick is, has the, the female has this white dot on her back and the dog tick, which is really common in our area. These are the three most common ones in our area. They can all transmit disease to humans and to dogs. Okay, starting May 1st, which is a couple days, time to look for ticks the size of poppy seeds. Do you see any nymphal stage deer ticks on this poppy seed bagel? Anyone see any? How about now? Well, there's there's one, two, three, four. There's three. Three. I see okay. three. No, yep. this is really magnified. These are poppy seeds, you know. So in order to see these ticks, these nymph ticks, which can transmit disease, you have to really look close. And you're not checking your bagels. You know, you're checking your body. <laughs> <laughs> but 
but you can check your bagels too if you want. Okay, this is these are their adult deer ticks or black legged ticks. This is a sesame seed. So you can see the adult female is, is the size of a sesame seed and the male is smaller. The males, um, this part is all black and female is kind of a reddish orange down here, but otherwise black. Okay, the abdomen, see here's the abdomen. And here is the dorsal shield. So on the male is quite large and on the female it's not so large. And then the mouth parts, this is called a hypostomy. And it, it actually has a, a barb that opens up, well, that makes a slice in your skin. And because it, the tick is able to produce a kind of a numbing material, you don't feel that. You won't feel a tick bite. But they use the, the apostomy then has a barbed feeding tube that is injected or um, in, put into, into the host and the female tick um, sucks up the blood. The male tick does not feed. He doesn't take a blood meal, just the female. His only purpose in his short life is to um, impregnate the female and then he dies. Okay, the deer tick, the dog tick, the lone star tick. The nymphs, the smallest parts, which are just as dangerous, if not, the adult males are not dangerous, but the adult females are. They are um, the ones that transmit disease, have a blood meal and transmit disease. Okay, the black-legged tick is the only tick that transmits Lyme disease except for the western black-legged tick, which is similar to ours, and it's on the west coast. Ours is, of course, the east coast, the northeast. Um, anaplasmosis, babesiosis, all are from the black-legged tick. And the bad thing is, rarely, a, a female tick can um, deliver a number of bacteria in one bite. If she's carrying the bacteria for these other ones, she can actually deliver all three at once. The lone star chick, Elichiosis, and the dog chick, uh, Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever. Half of all, half of all adult deer ticks and 25% of the nymphs carry the bacteria for Lyme disease, according to the health department research. And nymphs are responsible for a greater share of Lyme disease transmission. Why do you suppose? Any ideas? Then I'll tell you. They're responsible for more of the um, transmission of Lyme disease because they're so small, they're not often detected. Okay. Okay, and this is how, this is how ticks um, find us. This female tick up here on the end of a piece of grass or a, you know, weed or something, that's called questing. And she hangs on to the um, whatever it is, usually about knee high. She hangs on to it with her rear legs and she takes her two front legs and she waves them. She holds them up and she waves them. And, and she, um, then if something walks by, brushes by, she attaches to it. So you find them questing and down below on this, uh, the lower picture, if you can see that deer chick right in here, the female deer chick, she right is yep. litter. The nymphs are frequently be found in the, in the leaf litter. They hitch a ride sometimes on a um, white footed mouse which then transports it to wherever it happens to go. Um, ends up when their females long, or adult females are more apt to get on a, um, a deer. So deer and white-footed mouse, as well as raccoons, rabbits, any number of mammals, they can all get ticks, okay? All right. The sensory organs on the front legs can um, 
sends trace amounts of gases, carbon dioxide. So when a warm-blooded animal walks through the woods or walks on just not right on the trail, but is kind of brushing against grass or weeds or whatever, the, um, the adult female knows it's coming because of the carbon dioxide. And the trace amounts of carbon dioxide can stay on areas of where the animals and humans have traveled for a couple of days. So when they go to Quest, they know where they're going before they get there. Okay, so you wanna stay on the trail, avoid tall grasses, and hopefully most of the trails that you would be on would be um, posted that is tick season. Okay, this is a, a diagram of the life cycle of a three host chick. Starts with the eggs, we're number one. And the, this life cycle can take one to two years, depending on whether or not they can find a host between the life stages. So the eggs hatch, you get the larva, which only has six legs. That's on the ground. Um, usually you'll get on like the mouse or a chipmunk, anything like that that's close to the ground and walks on the ground. And after it's had a, a blood meal, it drops off and it molts. So then you have the eight-legged nymph, becomes a nymph from a larva to a nymph. It feeds on small mammals, do, drops to the ground and molts. And then it becomes, it molts into a uh, adult, uh, which feed on larger mammals because they usually stay higher off the ground. Uh, livestock, pets, deer, humans. And this is a good reason not to um, encourage deer on your property. Don't feed deer. Um, I know it's hard not to, but you could be saving yourself a lot of hassle. This is the range of the black-legged chick. You can see it covers almost all of the east. Greatest risk is of uh, being bitten exists in the spring, summer, and fall. The nymphs are out now. And the stages most likely to bite humans are the nymphs and the adult females. This is how the adult female bites. She uses a hypostomy at the, you know, at the, like her beak, if you want to call it that. And she puts her, sticks her head into, through the, through the skin. And again, you don't feel this. It's not like a mosquito bite or, or any other kind of bite. You won't feel it. And down at the bottom here, we have an unfed tick. And then ticks that have been fed, they, they engorge with blood. So they go from being the size of a sesame seed, maybe to the size of a pea or a little bigger than a pea, and they are full of blood. They need the blood in order to produce eggs. Okay, to remove the tick, you grab it as close to the skin as you can, and you pull straight up. If you squeeze its abdomen, you're gonna push more of the bacteria or the, the stomach contents into your skin. So you don't wanna grab it with your fingers, you don't wanna um, grab it by the legs, you don't wanna grab it anywhere that then right behind the head, which is at skin level, and pull up. Okay, don't panic. You know, it's hard not to panic. Um, not all ticks carry disease, and they need to be attached for a period of time before the bacteria is transferred. There are a lot of, um, a lot of opinions of how long. Some say as, as little as 24 hours. Now, there are some ticks that are seen seven hours. Um, could be as much as 72 hours. The tick, after it has a blood meal, it will drop off and in a period of time lay eggs. So if you don't catch it while it's on you, you could be infected and never see the tick. Okay, that's why you want to perform tick checks regularly and move any promptly. It reduces your risk. And we're asking you to save it Save the tick in a baggie if it's um, if it's still alive and it could be seal the baggie, put it in the freezer. Um, it kills it and keeps it intact, 
so that we can identify it. Uh, and if you have, <coughs> excuse me, any symptoms, you need to know what kind of tick it was. Because the ticks carry different diseases, you can't be treated for the disease unless you know what it might be. Okay, they're loaded with pathogens. These are the different diseases the female deer tick can give you, not just Lyme disease. All these others, some of can be really life-threatening, um, very serious. Powassan virus, this last one, can cause seer disease, including encephalitis and meningitis. So you can see this, is, this isn't something we can be cavalier about. This is a serious health issue. Okay, um, Lyme disease. Inflammatory disease caused by the bacteria that's transmitted through the infected deer tick. Now you might get uh, what they call a bullseye rash, but in maybe 20 to maybe 30% of people who are infected do not get this rash, okay? But it's a, a red circle with a, a round, a, like a red solid circle with a, a circle of redness around it. You might have rash, uh, fever, chills, fatigue, headache, numbness, joint pain, short-term memory loss. They use antibiotics, but you want to catch it as soon as possible. You know, this, the long-term long um, health things of Lyme disease are really serious. I know someone who has Lyme disease. He, he was bitten several years ago and didn't know it, and it wasn't diagnosed easily. Now people, the doctors are more um more cognizant of the issue i went in for a checkup one day and he asked me if i had any symptoms of lyme disease you know and of course i didn't but i thought that's a good thing to ask you know it, tell people what the symptoms are and ask if they have anything ask about the rash for sure but he this friend i was telling you about has heart problems he has crippling arthritis. He has neurological issues, all because the Lyme disease progressed past the point where it could be managed. And right now there is no vaccine against Lyme disease. In the, um, let's see, early 2000, late 1990s, they did have a vaccine but the company that made it gave up on it. People weren't interested. They didn't think they needed it. It wasn't 100% effective. It was costly. So they're not using it. Now, some, somebody might start, you know, kind of sprucing it up or bringing it up to the present um, conditions because the patent expired on it a long time ago. So... There are people who are looking. This is the lone star tick. Uh, the white dot in the middle of the female's back is uh, representative of. This is where you're finding it in the southeast, but look how close it is to where we are. It's in southern New York, um, Hudson Valley. So we can expect that when the weather warms up, especially when we get humid, Ticks have to have moisture and warmth, okay? So that's why you end up with them, you know, like under your armpit. It's moist. Well, maybe it's not moist if you use an antiperspirant, but it might be moist and it's uh, warm, okay? Anywhere like that. Anyway, this is the Lone Star Tick. It causes serious diseases. It's very aggressive. Um, it bites humans, has a white lone star dot on its back, the adult female. The saliva can be irritating, so you might get a redness or discomfort at the bite site. That doesn't mean you're infected. Um, but the nymph and adults most frequently bite humans and transmit disease. This is a, um, a syndrome that happens to some people after they have a lone star tick bite. 
that bite transmits a sugar molecule called alpha gal, and in some people, that alpha gal um, triggers an immune system reaction that later produces mild to severe allergic symptoms when they eat red meat. <clears throat> and it, it doesn't go away. So your steak days, your hamburger days, your are, are over. I would have a hard time with that. This is the American dog tick. Um, dog ticks are sometimes called wood ticks. They'll be found on dogs, of course. They also bite humans. Um, during spring and summer is the most dangerous time. It is for all of these ticks. Okay, and this is the brown dog tick. You can see it's nationwide. And the biggest issue with the brown dog tick, the dog, a dog is more likely is the common host. Okay, it could bite humans or other animals, transmits Rocky Mountain spotted fever, and dogs can get these diseases too. They manifest in other ways. Um, a dog can get Lyme disease, although it won't manifest in the same way it does with a human. So you want to check your animals too. But the thing with the brown dog tick, they call it the cockroach of the tick world because one pregnant female brown tick can lay up to 3,000 eggs in your house, okay? Um, you'll be spending a lot of time trying to um, get rid of them. All it takes is one, and they are tiny, tiny eggs, tiny eggs. So you want to avoid that, and your best way to avoid that is to check your dog for chicks. So what can you do to protect yourself? That's what we want to know. Okay, you want to protect yourself from disease. You walk in the middle of the trail, wear a hat when you're outside in the woods or hiking or, you know, anywhere that you expect ticks might be. Tuck your hair into it under the hat, long sleeve shirt, uh, fitted at the wrist, shoes, no bare feet or sandal. You want socks, long pants, and you want to put your socks over the top of your pants or duct tape. Um, considering using DEET for your skin or permethrin for your clothes, we're gonna talk about that. Wear light or white color clothing, you're more likely to see a tick if you've got a white shirt on or you know cream color than if you have dark blue. Um, do a tick check immediately and three days after. The reason you would do it immediately and three days after is because if you don't find it immediately, it doesn't mean it's not there. And you are more likely to find it after it starts engorging. So if you find a tick, remove it carefully and save it. And you want to um, get protection for your pets. This again is my grandchildren um, not wearing tick protective clothing and wearing tick protective clothing because they hike, their family hikes. Okay, tick smart tips, tuck in your shirt and tail, shirt tail when ticks are active, keep pointy tweezers and a Ziploc bag handy. If you go to different places to hike, keep it in the glove compartment of your car. If you have a lot of ticks on you, you walk through a, you know, a bunch of eggs that have just hatched, you have all these things, duct tape um, and check below the belt for poppy seed size smaller ticks while sitting on the toilet. Best way to examine your groin area for ticks, and remember we're talking moist and warm, um, is while you're sitting on the toilet. These are the places you're going to check. Your scalp, in and behind the ears, back of the neck, under the waistband, um, under the bra bands, under your arms, in your crotch, behind the knees. Those are the places that are dark and moist and where your clothing is tight. The ticks almost always, if they, if they get on you from ground level, they're gonna work their way up. 
Okay, they're gonna crawl up until they get to a place that is that they choose. They kind of a picnic spot. If they if you brush against one that's questing, they're usually that's usually at like knee height. If you're a child though, that's higher. But they work their way up. They go up. You're not gonna find one that you know attaches to your arm and crawls down. Okay. This is, if this is your yard, this is kind of an a indication of where you're likely to find, like the Lone Star Tick, the woods, the edge of the woods where the lot grass is longer, and the turf where your lawn is. So this one you're more likely to find on the woods, in the woods, or at the edge of the woods, the Lone Star Tick. The Black-Legged Tick, the same, the woods, uh, the edge of the woods, and the turf, and the American dog tick is almost half and half. Okay, you're you're usually going to find that in the turf and the edge of the turf. <coughs> okay, you want to create a barrier block, even if you don't live in the woods. We're finding them uh, having people report ticks in their gardens, mm -hmm. um, anywhere where you have weeds. So, and if you have animals come through there, especially if you have deer walk through, if you have, you know, rabbits, um, raccoons, skunks, any kind of mammal walk through. So you want to create a barrier. And you can do that by where these arrows are. They indicate that you have kept that clear of stuff growing and you filled it with rock or you filled it with mulch or something like that. It reminds the kids playing on the equipment that that's the safety zone, that you want to stay off there. It keeps them out of the lawn, okay? There's nothing for them in a pile of mulch, um, but there is on the lawn, there's people, there's dogs. So you can make a safety zone. And this is the way they test when they do, they're scouting, the researchers are scouting and we can do the same in our yards or on our property where we are likely to be or where we want to put a picnic table or anything like that. They take a piece of white cloth, usually like a flannel, tie string around the top, and they drag it because the ticks will jump on. If you have ticks on the ground or in that taller grass, they're going to jump onto that because it's moving. And so they're questing. They see it. They know it's there. They sense the human there something brushes against them and they're on it. And it gives you a good sense of if you have ticks and how many you have and what kind they are. Okay, um, you can use a permethrin in your, um, like your, your that this zone, the um, barrier block, a permethrin is a insecticide. It's a, um, man-made version of what is produced by chrysanthemums. It's an insecticide and it kills ticks and mosquitoes that come in contact with it, as opposed to DEET, which is an insect repellent. You can never use DEET on an animal, okay? It, if you are going out and you have a short sleeve shirt on and you're gonna go where there's ticks or there goes where there's mosquitoes even, um, a coating of DEET or a spray of DEET will repel them. If you are um, going hiking or something, you want to use permethrin on your clothes and be careful of the animals, of any animals you have. So if you're using permethrin, you spray the inside surface of your pants and your shorts with repellent you spray everyone's shoes with tick repellent. And they, they say you should do that like every three weeks. When you come back in, you take your clothes off and you put them in the dryer, not the washer, because uh, that won't kill the ticks. But heat, dry heat does. So you throw your clothes in the dryer on high for 10 minutes, and then you can wash them. When you shower, check your entire body, including the scalp and 
everywhere else, everywhere. And what size you're, it is you're looking for. If they also make re tick repellent clothing, and these are clothes that are infused with um, permethrin, they last up to like 30 washes. Um, if you spend a lot of time outdoors, maybe your job requires that you spend enough time outdoors, or you know, if you're a lineman and walking through the brush or whatever every day, you might want to consider something like this. You can also um, make your own by spraying the cl your clothes with permethrin, and they will do, I think it's through seven washes. So these are the companies that you can purchase uh, those clothing from and tick repellent you could get I think at probably Lowe's you can get permethrin it's used for other things besides uh, tick repellent because it it um, it kills insects okay and don't ever think that you're safe during the winter because that's not it's not true anytime the it goes above 32 degrees the ticks are active because they're not covered with snow and they're not freezing. So we have people every year who say, I don't know what this is. I, you know, it couldn't be a tick. Well, it is, it is a tick. So don't be lackadaisical. These are some resources that are excellent. This tickencounters.org is very good. It has a lot of different, Things to look at everything from how the how the tick by um, stages and gorges. It has different kinds of um, maps. Uh, anything that you ever you might want to ever know about ticks, and probably a lot of stuff you'd rather not know about ticks. You're going to find at TickEncounters.org. and the New York Health Department and the CDC.